All right, hey guys, um, this is lecture 13. What we're going to be going over tonight is going to be topo surfaces. So those are sort of um, mapping soil heights, ground heights, um, when you're working with Revit. And so what we're going to be going over is um, how to actually create one from scratch um, and kind of what that entails and then what the site markers are. Um, and then we're actually going to be building that and then after this video I will be posting a um, another milestone walkthrough for what you're going to be doing for your milestone this week so um, let's get started here so I've got my level one here um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to massing in site right here and then I'm going to click on topo surface and it's going to load what was that error? Oh, yeah. So it gives me this error right here. I was going to kind of jump to that in a second. But um, what this is saying is it's not available. What you're placing right now is not available in the current view. This is something you've probably noticed when you start placing lights that are kind of above your uh, point of view. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change over to site in the project browser right here. So I'm going to change to site. And we'll talk about these two little blue things here in a minute. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on place point. And I'm going to just kind of freestyle this. And then I'm going to put a whole bunch more dots here. Um, and you don't want to put kind of too many. It's hard to just say like what, what a good amount is. Um, and then I'm putting these ones right here because you do kind of want something in the middle to break it up. So what we have right here now is kind of this cloud of little dots. And um, again, if we go to level one, I'm not going to be able to see them because they're drawn. Um, let me actually switch over to it now to an elevation view. And you can see that they're right there on that level one. OK, they're right at the bottom of it, which is where the camera for level one stops, because this is a camera looking down for level one. So we don't actually see it in this view. So let me break this out. Let's just get rid of level one for now. All right, so we've got this whole cluster of these different points here. And let me open a 3D view so we can actually see what's going on. So you can see that there's all these points right here. And what each of those represents is a, what it should represent is an elevation mark at a certain point. This is something that you'd usually get from someone who would come in and, um, wow, there goes my brain, uh, do a survey of the property. Um, and so you would be able to start with a map of the property or at least um, a point cloud like this and then each of these would be at a different height. I don't have access to one of those right now. I, I don't know, I might see if I can download one from somewhere um, as an example. Um, you can um, optionally, if you did have a file that supported that, that contained that data, you could uh, import it with this create from import button um, again, I don't have one of those files right now, so we're going to go with this and we'll kind of go from here. So, right now it's all flat. And what I can do is I can select some of these points right here, and then if I'm in one of the strict fixed elevation views, I can hit the down arrow. And you can see that as I do this, physically that kind of front part of this right here is actually dropping down and away from the rest of the model. And so, I can go through here and just kind of keep selecting things and then let me do come on oh, I didn't like those too many points and come on there we go um, and I'm just using the arrow keys on the keyboard the down keys for this and so let's kind of create this big slope. Um, and you can see it's kind of distorting occasionally. Um, you'll get these thicker, blacker lines in there. Um, I try to avoid those just because they kind of disrupt the visual aspect of this. Um, but what I'm going for is just sort of a nice gentle slope with a couple things to break it all apart here. So that's why I'm just trying to avoid some of those darker, thicker lines. Um, so I'm just going to adjust this. And you can see now that I've kind of got this slope going on right here. Um, and let's do just this last set right here. 
just to kind of smooth that last bit of facing right there. So now we've got this slope, and so this is where, for example, if you were building on a slope piece of property, you'd now be able to physically plan out how your structure is going to go. Um, I know this is technically for an interior architecture program, so you're generally not going to be dealing with site plans like this, but you never know. You might be doing it full time. Um, crazier things have happened out there. Anyway, so uh, once we have this, to actually build on the site, you now need to go in and do... Um, let's finish drawing that first. So I've got this, and now I can come back in and um, brain fart again. Uh, oh, right. Um, okay. So, um, uh, so anyway, okay. We've closed out of the. So we were in edit surface. Green check mark to close out. So now I can come over to building pad right here, and in a site plan view, I can come in and I can place this. Say. Maybe I want to build my structure right about here. Um, and then I can hit check mark. Now, it's going to place this at the level one. Um, I closed that too soon. There we go. So it's going to place this at level one because that's where I told it to go. And if you look at the elevation, it's got the top, just like a floor, is going to smack right up against the level one um, mark or the level one um, data mine that's going across here. And then it's going to do some filler. And if I was to actually say, for example, this wasn't here. This was, um, let's say it was higher up. And then this was at zero. It would actually cut away into the surface. So this is a way where if you are working on a hill or some sort of sloped area, you could actually cut into the surface very easily with this. And then this comes in and it creates a building pad, a, a concrete pad, for you to actually begin building on top of. So I could come in here with, uh, let's see, go to site, and then throw in some walls. Um, because of how this is built, I would use the finish face exterior, and um, technically I'd probably want to use um, not foundation concrete, um, probably six inch masonry, unless this is CM, this is probably CMUs, yeah, it's CMUs, all right, probably shouldn't use that, but hey, we're using it, so that's what I'm drawing with right now, um, and then uh, from here, you could then begin building a structure, and you can see that it basically lines up really nicely with the rest of the area here. So you could use this to create a series of spaces in your project where you would, um, let me see where the slope is, let me get something here, okay, I want to go there, okay. Um, so you could use this to create a series of spaces in your project where, for example, you might have another one of these further out and then make some kind of cool like bridge go into it so that's kind of what I'm trying to do right here while talking um, let's see and then of course you probably want to put railings on it and do all that other stuff so let me get here Space for to switch sides to if you're drilling an offset like that. All right, so now we could have two buildings like this. Maybe the slope is deeper or something, um, but you could use this to create an offset where you would physically raise up 
I'm going to turn off my camera there. You can physically raise up the position that your structure is sitting on um, in order to get it kind of elevated above the ground, but keep things at a level position. Now, another thing you can do um, with the, this uh, topo surface is you can change the material it is. By default, it's going to have that kind of dirt looking surface. Now, I I don't think it's changed. Grass. I don't think it's changed in 2020. We didn't have one before, so um, I can create a default new material and then go through the whole rename process. Rename this grass. Open up the material library. Search for grass, and eventually we'll get. Let's do dark gray. There we go. There we go. Oh, yeah, okay, it went. All right, so now we've got that. And then for um, the actual bases of these, we might have to come in. Um, oh, no, that's going to extend it because of that. So oh, there's a way to fix that. I don't remember what it is. Anyway, we'll, I'll look into it later. So here's um, the rest of my building. I can then go back to site plan. I can throw in some doors here, which... Yeah, I won't bother loading new ones in for this. Um, and I will have to go to my level one in order to do this correctly. Um, what I should do is I should go in and get the right doors, but we're not going to do that for a demo. Um, all right, so we can put doors and windows in, kind of the whole process that you're already used to. Um, and then let's throw some little bitty windows on here uh, just to kind of complete that look and so now we've got this little bridge area that goes between these two um, sort of weird tower castle things or something um, but you can use this to actually put together a series of points that would create a viable foundation for you to build on top of so um, that's topo surfaces and then along with that we've got the um, Nope, straight out of my brain again. God, um, the uh, building pad. All right, so topo surfaces, building pad. Um, you're going to be working with that on your milestone this week. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you guys in class. Otherwise, um, videos coming up next uh, for your milestone for this week. All right, I'll see you guys there.